15 in the NFL. It's time for teams to make a kick for the playoffs or get the boot out of here. It's the NFL on Fox. Washington wages battle at Tampa's Bay. The Skins are in an NFC East fracas. And Terry's Warriors need this one big time. But the Bucks D can sap their opponent's power. Sap? But excuse me, Mr. Buckman, would you please stop winking at us? The Giants hit the beach to face the Fish Boys in Miami. The Browns steal the G-Men's favorite color. Meanwhile, J.J. predicts a playoff fray to the finish. And he always loves the sweet taste of his M&Ms. Mm -mm. The Falcons and Saints square off at the Superdome. Atlanta's hungry for a W. Everett is sweet music. The Rams and the Bears clash at Soldier. Mr. Brooks, well, he's that dude going upstream, lacking the old rowing instrument, if you know what I mean. Meanwhile, Chicago is on the playoff balloon. With one more loss, and, well, oh, the humanity. Later, the Cowboys wrangle in the desert with the Cactus Boys. Reports of Emmett's demise were, well, let's just say, extremely fabricated, okay? But Zona's Big Bang Boomer, he's reloading, baby, for one last hurrah. Today, the West will be won as the Panthers attack the Niners by the Bay. Carolina's D's dominating. And when you're talking fast, this AJ knows football. But running Steve is rejuvenated. The TD to Jerry's as quick as rice. Hey, the winner of this one makes Lombardi's tournament. Now, live from the Fox Television Center in Hollywood, four guys who never get the boot because they got plenty of soul. It's the one and only Fox NFL Sunday. Week number 15, and former Commissioner Pete Rozell simply loved these kind of December Sundays. We have 21 teams still vying for the 10 remaining playoff spots, and NFL fans have come to know it as Pete's parody. Today, it's a doubleheader day featuring the battle for first place in the AFC. Make that the NFC West, Carolina and San Francisco. And along the way, Washington and Dallas looking toward their final week showdown at RFK. And hello again, everyone. I'm James Brown welcoming you to Fox NFL Sunday. And joining me as usual, my partners, Ronnie Lott, Howie Long, and Terry Bradshaw. We talked a little bit about Pete Rozelle. There is a Paul over the league. During your illustrious career, you got to know him pretty well. Yeah, Pete Rozelle is one of the classiest, nicest human beings I've ever been associated with. I think probably the greatest thing that ever happened to the National Football League was in 1966 with the merger of the AFL and the NFL. They needed commissioner. Who better than Pete Rozelle? The thing that he understood more than anyone as a public relations man was the love affair and what impact television would have on his beloved National Football League. A promoter, a salesman, a father, a man basically, if you summed it all up, just a fan of the NFL. He's going to be missed. Our condolences from all of us to his wife, Carrie, and their children and the family of Pete Rozelle. No doubt about that, Terry. And, of course, we'll have a bit more on the late commissioner coming up in the program in just a bit. All right, folks, here's a look at what's happening around the NFL. Patriots coach Bill Parcells, who won two Super Bowls with the New York Giants, plans to coach next season, according to his friends. However, Parcells, whose contract ends after this season, probably won't return to the Patriots, preferring to seek a job elsewhere. And oh, by the way, both the Giants and Jets could be in the market for a new head coach. And staying on the coaching front, his name was already hot in New Orleans, and following the Texas Longhorns' upset of Nebraska yesterday, John Makovic's stock rose even higher. Great call, fourth and an inch. Great call, James. And who was the quarterback? Mm. Huh? Who was the quarterback James in Texas? Brown, outstanding. All right, Makovic, you'll recall, coached Four seasons with the Chiefs in the mid-80s, reaching the playoffs once. All right, folks, time now to set the playoff picture for you. Your division leaders shape up this way. Green Bay is in the playoffs, and if they win their next three, they have home field throughout. Dallas has the tiebreaker over the Redskins, therefore they lead the East. And San Francisco on top in the West, but that could change today. If Carolina beats the 49ers, they clinch a playoff spot take control of the West and would have the inside track at a first round bye. Also, the Eagles' loss on Thursday means they're now in a dogfight for a playoff berth. Over in the AFC, the leaders are Denver, New England, and Pittsburgh. Denver has clinched home field advantage, while the Patriots and Steelers can wrap up playoff spots with victories today. As for the wild card, Buffalo and Kansas City are in good shape. 
Now, despite last Sunday night's pummeling, if the Chargers win their final three, they're also in as well. All right, folks, let's now focus on today's games right here on Fox. And for that, we turn to our Fox watch and we begin things in Tampa Bay where the Bucks host the Washington Redskins. Joe Buck joins us now with this preview. And good afternoon, Joe. All right, JB, thank you very much. It is a sunny and very windy day here in Tampa, Florida, in a game with North Turner is called a must-win situation for the Washington Redskins. Now, while well, the focus all week has been on the injured wide receivers, Michael Westbrook and Leslie Shepard, what is really a concern for the Redskins coming in ranked last in the league in defense is up front defensively. Earlier today, the Redskins checked on the status of the injuries to Sean Gilbert and Mark Boutte. Gilbert will play, will start, and will be limited. However, Mark Boutte is inactive. Not only will he not play today, he will be scoped tomorrow. That's the situation here in Tampa, Florida. Let's send you to Miami and Dick Stockton. Dick. All right, Joe, thank you very much. And the Miami Dolphins nurse slim playoff hopes as they go against the New York Giants. And Jimmy Johnson will start seven rookies today in his lineup. Unusual for a head coach to make a comment like this as Jimmy did. He said everyone is going to have a smile on his face after Sunday. You can count on it. There was obvious reaction in New York. And uh, I asked Jimmy uh, just a little while ago if he heard any reaction. Yeah, in fact, I talked to Dan Reeves about it, and Dan said their goal for this week is to wipe the smile off my face. Now, we'll see if that happens. Dan Reeves, of course, coming off a horrendous performance as Giants inept against the Philadelphia Eagles, says he will not hesitate to make any change anywhere in the lineup today, and that includes the quarterback position. That's the story here. Right now, let's send you out to Chicago and Tom Brenneman. Dick, thank you very much. The 4-9 Rams against the 5-8 Bears. It may sound like a big deal, but, Ronnie, it could be for head coach Rich Brooks. Well, the word out of St. Louis this week is that if Rich Brooks doesn't win these next three games, he could be out of a job. Now, you remember several weeks ago, Rams management issued that ultimatum saying that the team doesn't improve from here on out. There could be changing in the, changes in the coaching staff. Now, it's cold here. It's also outdoors, and the Rams have not won outdoors this year yet. Right now, let's get out of the cold, go down to New Orleans, and Kenny Albert. Well, Ron, we are indoors at the Superdome, where the Saints will try and avenge their two-point loss to the Falcons just three weeks ago. And with Jim Everett out today, he will not dress. It will be Doug Nussmeyer, the third-year man from Idaho, making his first NFL start, his last start, the 1993 East-West Shrine Game. And Nussmeyer will try and exploit the porous Falcons secondary. With Michael Haynes and Torrin Small out, the starting wide receivers for the Saints, Terry Guess and Lee Doremus. They will start 18 career receptions between the two of them. Now let's head from New Orleans back to Hollywood and James Brown. All right, Mr. Albert, and a reminder, today's a doubleheader Sunday here. Some of you will see the Carolina Panthers and the San Francisco 49ers battling it out in the West. Others will see Dallas taking on Arizona. Game time for Eastern, one Pacific right here on Fox. Terry, my goodness, the Washington Redskins have really struggled down the stretch, losing four of their last five. But you know what? It won't get easier against Tampa Bay. Skins have lost their last three to the Bucks. And Tampa Bay, if a defense, if you just look at that defense, only giving up 17 points a game. And I got to say this right off the bat. Tampa Bay doesn't know if it's the 7-1 Redskins they're playing or the team that's lost one only one of the last four games. They think it's the latter. They don't think they're a very good football team. I believe Tampa Bay feels as though today with Trent Dilford, my guy Trent, back in the saddle, playing good football, <laughs> is going to take care of the visiting Redskins. I'm glad you like Trent Dilford because he Always told me have. last <laughs> night that he's got a little bruise on his hand. He's going to, he expects to play, though. He expects to get the ball to Mike Alstead. But I talked to Hardy Nickerson, their defensive linebacker. He thinks that what they have to do is they got to get in a stack defense. They have to put pressure on the run game, take away Terry Allen. And then they think their corners can stand up to their wide receivers, Ellert, as well as the other receiver that they have there, Flipper Anderson. They think they got a shot of stopping these guys. Boutte's banged up. Gilbert's banged up. Flipper Anderson is a, is a security blanket yeah. signed earlier in the year. It's going to be exercised today. Leslie Shepard's banged up. Westbrook needs surgery. He's putting it off, trying to play the stretch run. Terry Allen will take a shot in the shoulder today. Bad shoulder. I'll tell you what, the Redskins Tampa's, are looking pretty bad. Tampa right now. Bay then looks pretty good. Doesn't I think. It? Thank you. What, what do you think? I Trent, think I'm with you. Why would, Terry, my guy. why would Terry lie to Ronnie and say he's been <laughs> Trent Dilfer's guy all the way? All right, folks. Time for a break. But first, here's a look at what else is on tap for today's show. Today on the one and only Fox NFL Sunday. Hardly an expansion team. The Carolina Panthers are a savvy bunch of veterans. Led by a rock-solid D. 
how he looks at what makes this defense work and what it has in store for its battle with the Niners. Also, once the mastermind behind the most feared offense in the NFL, Bill Walsh returned as the man behind the scenes. But lately, he's emerged into a more prominent role. Ronnie talks with the 49ers chief mechanic who's getting him in gear. Then, only recently, the whispers were getting louder around Big D that Emmett wasn't the same old Emmett. <laughs> yeah, right. He's back, big time. Sam Oliver discusses the redemption of a running back with Dallas's main man. Coming up, coming at you, the one and only Fox NFL Sunday. Fox NFL Sunday is brought to you by American Express and the Charge Against Hunger program. It's another way American Express helps you do more. By Philips Magnavox, bringing the power of the internet to your own television. By Porsche, who wish to remind you there is no substitute. And by 1-800-COLLECT, the way we call collect today.